starts right now. Traffic investigators and homicide detectives working to piece together what exactly led to a man being shot in the head while driving on Loop 1604. After the gunfire, his truck crashing into an off-duty officer's vehicle. All of this happening around 1215 this morning. This is Loop 1604 near Bulverde Road. Police say man and woman were driving westbound in that pickup truck hauling a trailer. That's when another vehicle pulled up next to them, shooting the victim in the head. Uh, the truck eventually crashing into an off duty officer's vehicle. The officer working construction traffic in the area. They were able to get out of the way before the wreck. As for the couple in that pickup, the man who was shot in the head pronounced dead on the scene. The woman in the passenger seat taken to nearby hospital with minor injuries right now. No suspects yet in custody. San Antonio police investigating how an argument ended up with one person stabbed in the neck overnight. SAPD says it happened just before midnight on the southeast side in the 500 block of Hot Wells. That's near South New Braunfels. Police say the two roommates were arguing when one of them stabbed the other one in the neck. SAPD says each roommate claims the other one started the argument. The victim taken to the hospital in stable condition. No word on any arrests or charges so far. And San Antonio police and crime stoppers asking for your help finding a person responsible for a murder that happened just last month. Police tell us around 915 on Sunday, May 31st, Charles Pryor was standing outside in the 3400 block of Action Lane. That's on the southwest southeast side when a vehicle pulled up with several suspects inside. Those suspects began shooting at Pryor, pronounced dead by the front door of his home. If you have any information that could lead to the arrest of the people responsible for this murder, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen right now, 210-224-STOP. And Crime Stoppers also looking for the person involved in an aggravated assault. Police say it happened around 3.30 in the morning two weeks ago on Saturday, June 6th at Wood Lake Parkway and Ben Zingleman Road. Bear County Sheriff's deputies were helping a stranded motorist at that intersection, and that's when they heard seven gunshots. They also heard the bullets flying near their heads, almost hitting them. The deputies believe the shots came from a vehicle traveling near the intersection of Wood Lake and Ben Zingleman. If you have any information on either of these cases, you're being asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And investigators with the U.S. Army increasing the war to 25 thousand dollars for any information about missing Fort Hood soldier Vanessa Gillen. The 20 year old last seen April 22nd in a parking lot at Fort Hood. Investigators say her car keys, room key, ID card and wallet later found in the armory room. That's where she had been working earlier in the day. According to the Army, more than 150 people have been interviewed so far regarding her disappearance. Now to the latest on the COVID-19 pandemic in the U.S. Cases still rising in at least 21 states and Puerto Rico. Hospitalizations have increased in 11 states, including right here in Texas. A revised forecast model by the University of Washington predicting 200,000 Americans could die from COVID-19 by October. And this as a, there's a new push to reopen states. ABC's Ines Delicatera is in Washington. She has the very latest. This morning, growing fears of a possible second wave. Coronavirus cases rising around the country, with Texas seeing the largest increase, setting records almost daily for COVID-19 patients admitted to hospitals just weeks after the state began reopening. One Texas health official on CNN. The key message is that we may be tired of this virus, but this virus is not tired of us. In Phoenix, most ICU beds now occupied by COVID-19 patients. This second second wave is much more worrisome than the first because we are not starting from a baseline of zero capacity or minimal capacity. In Missouri, five more people testing positive for COVID-19 after attending those massive pool parties at Lake of the Ozarks on Memorial Day weekend. And in Florida, beaches reopening days ago, but the state hitting its highest single day of cases over the weekend, prompting Miami's mayor to postpone phase three of reopening. We are seeing uh, an uptick, particularly in the age demographic 18 to 35 and particularly after a Memorial Day weekend. But Florida's governor stating the increase is due to expanded testing. We're doing three times as many tests a day now than we did at the end of March. 
This as the FDA now revokes its emergency authorization of hydroxychloroquine to combat COVID-19. President Trump touted the anti-malaria drug as a game changer and even says he took it for two weeks, though there was no evidence the drug could prevent the virus. It didn't shorten the time infection and it didn't reduce the risk of death. They did note, however, that in some studies, people did worse. And some airlines now cracking down on passengers for not wearing face masks. United saying passengers who don't comply with the policy will be placed on an internal travel restriction list. And Americans saying it may follow suit. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. Meantime, here in San Antonio, the news a little bit better than it has been the last few days. There are 44 new cases in Bear County since the last report. That's quite a bit less. It brings the total number of cases, though, to 4,437. The death toll stands at 89 when the last week it sat at 78. The number of people in the hospital is at 187. That's nearly 100 more than last week. And Governor Greg Abbott set to give an update on the Texas hospital's capacity as the state battles this increase in patients. Texas health officials reported a one day high in the number of hospitalizations of patients just yesterday. Governor Abbott expected to speak today at one o'clock right after the news at noon. We're going to be streaming the conference right here on KSATS. Make sure to stick with us for the latest on the pandemic here in the Lone Star State. And after months of being closed, the San Antonio Public Library resuming partial services today. The reopening includes contact-free pickup services at all public libraries. People will be able to pick up reserved books and other materials. Book drop-offs will also be functional again. The nine locations on your screen will also offer limited computer use. Computer access will be by appointment only, and that is set to begin at 3 p.m. People will be limited to one hour and each station will be disinfected after each use. If you have any questions about all of these library services, we have those answers. Just head to KSAT.com. In other news, Judson ISD's Board of Trustees is meeting this afternoon to discuss a resolution on the commitment to black students in the school district. Judson ISD's Superintendent, Dr. Jeanette Ball, says she's passionate about staying committed to diversity and inclusion in the district. African-American studies represent about 21% of JISD, the largest number of any Bear County school district. They're going to be discussing the implementation as well of African-American studies courses. And during this moment of history, the San Antonio Black Lawyers Association is working to bridge the gap between the community and the legal world. The organization has been part of the Alamo City community for more than 30 years. Their mission promote, increase, and support the presence of black lawyers in the great San Antonio area. And as we face both the pandemic and the prominence of protests around the country, Judge Stephanie Boyd, she has some words of wisdom. If you know history, you'll better understand what the struggle is and why people are protesting. But above all, be kind, protest peacefully. And if you're looking to help out the mission, they are promoting three philanthropies you can donate right now. The San Antonio Black Lawyers Association Scholarship Fund, Youth Transitioning into Adulthood, and Children's Court. We'll be right back. Two men detained after taking San Antonio police officers on a chase this morning through the area of the medical center. This after police got a tip that the suspects were involved in two armed robberies earlier this morning. Sarah Costa shows us the damage left behind from this wild chase. A damaged Jag work truck and a popped off wheel from the suspect's pickup truck. It's what's left from the scene and where it ended at Lamb and Medical. But there is so much more to this chase. San Antonio police say the chase started just before nine this morning after two men were involved in an armed robbery at a Walmart on De Zavala Road. And then a second robbery at a business on Warsbach. Police located the suspects driving a black pickup truck on Warsbach and that's when the chase began. Shortly after police called off the chase because the driver was driving erratically. Then at Lamb and Medical Drive, an officer located the suspects in the truck. That's when police say the driver jumped out and ran off on foot. The passenger, however, got behind the wheel. The other got into the driver's seat and uh, and attempted to drive away. Uh, the results of that, their attempt to flee was what you see here. Uh, they rammed a police car as well as uh, struck two other civilian vehicles. Police were able to detain the man who hit the police car on scene. 
The Eagle helicopter was up searching for the second suspect for over an hour. Police eventually detained two men nearby. They believe one may be the second suspect. Both of those suspects are being questioned. No weapons were found on scene. The men could face charges of armed robbery, evading, and assault of a police officer. And on top of all of this, police say that that pickup truck was stolen from Canyon Lake. From the Medical Center, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood named Fire Chief of the Year by the 2020 Metro Chiefs Association. The organization meant to bring together fire chiefs from large metropolitan fire departments. They share information and they focus on major issues with policy changes in the U.S. Fire Chief Hood accepted his downtown, his award downtown this morning. The original ceremony was supposed to take place in Washington, D.C., but was canceled due to the COVID-19. As the need for food assistance continues to grow in San Antonio amid the pandemic, KSAN Community is partnering with the San Antonio Food Bank to provide relief. All month long, you can donate to the Spurs Cafe Spurs Give Together Fund. This initiative helps local restaurants prepare meals for those in need in San Antonio. The food bank says around 200,000 children in Bear County are at risk for hunger this summer. To donate to the Spurs Give Together Fund, just head to the KSAC Community section, KSAT.com. For every dollar donated, seven meals will be given to people in need. Take a live look outside and you will see there are clouds out there and some of us, including myself, actually got a surprise shower this morning. That's good, Ursula. I'm glad you got some rain because, you know, it's been a dry June and there are a few pop up showers out there, especially generally west of downtown San Antonio and up into the hill country. In fact, some of these downpours uh, will be just that downpours really heavy rain just briefly, though, because they're moving to the northeast and they're highly isolated. If you're on the eastern side of Bear County and you look out to the west, you may even be able to see these isolated showers in the in the form of rain shafts. In fact, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. We've got one isolated shower uh, down near Gray Forest, just on the south of Gray Forest. And then within Loop 410, we've actually got a couple of isolated showers, one making its way toward Palo Alto College right now, and then one just moved through uh, JBSA Lackland there uh, and uh, dumped a little bit of rain. I'm looking at some of the trans guide images, and we do have a couple of areas where there's ponding on the roadways, especially along 1604 and out along Highway 90 there on the west side. But if you're out near Divine, you're currently getting a good downpour. Look at Divine right now, getting those uh, periods of uh, heavy rainfall at times. Now, these showers uh, will be isolated in nature. Not everybody is going to see rain, but if you do see rain, you could see a quick quarter inch of rainfall in some places as they've seen on the west side of Bear County. This was out on the west side there. She sent in the picture through our KSAT Connect feature on our weather app. So thank you. If you have some uh, pictures of the rain in your rain gauge, let us know. The aquifer is actually unfortunately down about a foot over the past 24 hours. And in the pollen count today, it's pretty good news. Mold is low at 250. Pigweed is low at 20. But I wonder if today's isolated rain is going to make that mold go up over the next few days. Another look at radar as well as the rest of the day. What you can expect for the rest of the week. We're even going to talk about how the summer months sometimes bring that Saharan dust into the atmosphere. A lot to cover in the forecast. I'll have that coming up. Ursula, Max. Thank you so much, Sarah. We have some good news this noon regarding retail sales. And as you can see, the stock market as well, up 653 points. Well, retail sales in the U.S. were up. They were much better than what economists were expecting. The report released this morning shows that retail sales jumped more than 17% from April to May, doubling economists' expectations. A great sign as the country tries to recover from the impact of the pandemic. Well, here's the thing, though. The Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell came out today and said that there's, quote-unquote, significant uncertainty about the timing and the strength of that recovery. He also says a full recovery is unlikely until people feel more and more confident that the disease has been contained. 
Miss Sarah Spivey has been keeping an eye on these showers that are popping up. But, you know, someone asked me about that African dust. Mm, the Saharan yeah. dust. Yeah. I, the Saharan dust, the African dust. That's yeah, right. They, yeah. They're expect, you know, we expect it every year around this time. Around this time from about June through September. That's when we usually see some kind of uh, effects from the Saharan dust. And we will probably see something late next week. But for now, the only real thing in the air is the humidity and for some some people some good rainfall. There's been a steady swath of rain generally west of I-10 and west of I-37 for a good portion of uh, the KSAT 12 viewing area. However, if you're east of San Antonio, you just haven't seen much uh, today. We do have some heavier areas of rain, particularly right now near Divine. Uh, and again, there's no lightning with these. These are just your pop up showers thanks to the humidity and a little bit of weakness in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Uh, but in on the west side of town, we've actually seen a decent amount of rain in some places. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the six hour rainfall totals, at least radar estimated rainfall. And you can see that in some places we will zoom in a little bit more, especially along the outer bank there of loop 1604 on the western side of that. We've seen in some places radar estimated rain of about half an inch, radar estimated rain of near half an inch toward Lackland Air Force Base as well. So these are the areas that have really benefited from today's rain. Now, the official rainfall is taken right at the airport, which is right here. And guess what? Nothing. A big old zero, a big old goose egg. Yeah, unfortunately, we just haven't seen much in the way of rainfall near the airport, and it doesn't look like we're going to see a ton uh, today. These are becoming even more isolated. Uh, there are still some areas that are uh, experiencing some decent rain at the moment, and one of those places is uh, near Natalia there and just south of Castroville. So these showers will continue to be isolated today. And for the rest of the afternoon, we'll call it about a 20 to 30% chance to see some rain in your backyard. Again, it doesn't look too great if you're generally east of downtown San Antonio. We'll call a high of 92 today, so it's going to be a toasty afternoon. Southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. And like I said, that rain has fallen everywhere except for the airport. And so officially at the airport, we've only seen a little bit less than a tenth of an inch of rain, which happens to be more than two inches shy of what we normally see by this time in June for the month. And we're about an inch in deficit of rainfall for the year. It's 85 degrees outside right now and we're seeing breaks in those clouds. So for most people, it's nice and sunny and warm 85 in San Antonio, 88 in Del Rio. And then looking ahead, we will be humid for the rest of the week. That humidity is going to stick with us. But tomorrow rain will be a lot less uh, widespread. We're really only going to have a few coastal showers out there for both tomorrow and Thursday. Then by the weekend, isolated rain. There are some hints that by uh, Monday we could end up seeing some rainfall. At least one of our forecasting models is showing that. But another thing the forecasting model is showing is that the trade winds are going to end up picking up that Saharan dust. And by the middle to the end of next week, we could have some dust in the atmosphere, which would cause complications for people who suffer from respiratory issues like asthma. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. As always, in the summer months, we're the heat monitors and we're also the African dust monitors. So. Yeah, I'm waiting Stick on that heat index. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. All right. Could we see NBA basketball and when the latest plan for the NBA to continue amid the pandemic? What fans can expect? And there's a lot more certainty on the court than there is in the baseball diamond. Fans for the MLB hoping for the best. Cautious optimism proceeding forward. We're going to have the latest on how they plan to go forward. They play. That is the question when it comes to the MLB. Originally, the commissioner came out telling the players and fans there would be a 100% chance of having a 2020 season. Since then, he walked that back after negotiations with the Players Association of 
what the shortened season could look like, saying that he's not so sure we're going to see MLB this year anymore. The players associated is livid, issuing a statement saying in part, quote, this latest threat is just one more indication that Major League Baseball has been negotiating in bad faith since the beginning. This has always been about extracting additional pay cuts from players, and this is just another day and another bad faith tactic in their ongoing campaign. Important to mention, though, the league has already revealed several players on big league rosters testing positive for COVID-19. And from the baseball diamond to the basketball court, a plan to finish out the 2020 season for the NBA is in place, but more and more players trying to get out of the restart. Right now, the plan is for the NBA to have 22 teams to return to play. All of this starting July 31st, and all of it is going to be inside a dome at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex, Disney World in Orlando, Florida. The Spurs, though, remember, they are one of those teams that are invited, one of the 22, fighting for a final playoff spot. So here it is, the final total of 22 teams, 16 teams in a playoff position, plus those within six games of the eight seed, allowing teams to ramp up, ramp up regular season games before the playoffs, a training camp set to start June 30th and last a week. All teams set to fly to Orlando on July 7th, three weeks before the start of the season. And if all goes well, game seven of the NBA Finals will be no later than Monday, October 12th. With the season set to start on July 31st, that means the remainder of the season would be at most completed in no more than 74 days. And if there is no need for play-in tournaments to establish that last seed, hopefully the Spurs make it. Cautious optimism going forward. The start of the playoffs could be moved up several days. And from the basketball court to the newly announced nominee class for the 2021 Class of College Football Hall of Fame. Along with former coach Bob Stoops, a lot of big names on this list. Georgia cornerback Champ Bailey, Miami quarterback Ken Dorsey, Syracuse defensive end Dwight Freeney, and Florida State kicker Sebastian Janikowski. We all know Ray Lewis from Miami. Stanford receiver Ed McCaffrey, his son. He's pretty good. He's all right. USC quarterback Carson Palmer and North Carolina defensive end Julius Irving. Just oh. kidding. Julius Peppers. What about Joe Burrow? Joe Burrow they they got to wait a little bit. They got to wait a little bit. Oh. Yeah, there's like a finite period. You have to wait until you're announced. But you know what? He's a Heisman winner. He's a national champion. I'm sure he'll be in there in a few years. Slam dunk. Absolutely. Thank you. The Democratic National Committee has launched a new tool that will help voters who may have been removed from the polls for being inactive. How many people this effort will be affecting? And 911 calls released in the latest murder case in Atlanta. We're going to have the details after the break. We have the latest now on the ongoing unrest in Atlanta after 27-year-old Rayshard Brooks was shot and killed by police while attempting to run away. And earlier today, in response to the call for social justice, President Donald Trump signing an executive order on safe policing. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest on the case from Atlanta. Authorities in Atlanta have now released the 911 calls from a Wendy's parking lot where Rayshard Brooks was shot and killed by police Friday night. I have a car. I think he's intoxicated. He's in the middle of my drive-thru. Police body and dash cam footage captured the incident. Brooks struggling as officers tried to arrest him for suspicion of drunk driving, running away and appearing to point a stun gun at police when Officer Garrett Rolfe opens fire, killing him with two shots to the back. Brooks' death sparking days of protests in Atlanta. The district attorney is expected to announce if there will be charges in the next few days. The Brooks family is calling for the officers involved to be arrested. The trust that we have with the police force is broken. And the only way to heal some of these wounds is through a conviction and a drastic change with the police department. The city fired Officer Rolf on Saturday, and Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms is announcing a new list of police reforms. She's requiring officers to use de-escalation methods before turning to deadly force. It is clear that we do not have another day, another minute, another hour to waste. 
Today, President Trump signing an executive order that while stopping short of radical change, calls on police departments to adopt best practices of use of force and create a database to track police misconduct and encourages departments to use social workers on some nonviolent calls. Trevor Alt, ABC News, Atlanta. And the Democratic National Committee launching a new effort today to help people get out and vote. The DNC developing a new tool aimed at voters who may have been removed from the polls for being inactive. Many states had gotten rid of voters who had not voted in the past three years or did not respond to their mailing list. Now, state officials defend the purge as a means to prevent fraudulent voting. Critics say it has had the effect of denying voting rights to younger voters and minorities. The DNC says the tool will help them contact people who may not know they are ineligible to vote and help them to re-register. It estimated that nearly 16 million voters were removed from the rolls between 2014 and 2016 alone. Take a look at this. Firefighters in New Mexico are busy battling flames near Durango. The East Canyon fire has grown to more than 1,200 acres. It's forced people to evacuate the area. The fire has spread quickly and temporarily closed down a major highway that's nearby. And heading on over to Arizona, hundreds of firefighters still busy putting out the flames of the Bighorn Fire. It has consumed more than 14,000 acres. The fire started June 5th after thunderstorms helped ignite the flames. Firefighters are making some progress. Bighorn now 30% contained. Three people have suffered minor heat-related illnesses. And back here at home, let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. 85 degrees, but I promise I was out there with an interview earlier. They were sweating, I was sweating. They looked at me and said, it's gotta be in the 90s. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet, but it will be this afternoon. And it feels a lot warmer than it is outside because of the high humidity. In fact, some people are actually getting some rain. And depending on where you live, the weather forecast has been drastically different. If you are west of a comfort all the way to Pleasanton line, if you're west of that, you've received a steady dose of on and off again, pop up light to moderate rain showers. If you're east of that boundary, You've not seen very much at all. Just a really hot day. We do have one shower that's working its way right along I-10 right now for the uh, La Quintera area all the way up to Bernie. You can see some free car washes there going on along 1604 in that I-10 interchange. And other than that, uh, we've got a few pop-up showers near Palo Alto, near Somerset, and then one just to the southwest of Castroville and to the north of Divine. Now, these showers have dropped in some places about a quarter to half an inch of rain west of San Antonio in a few very lucky spots. The rest of us, however, are unfortunately dry and as we head into the rest of the afternoon we'll really only carry about a 20 to 30 percent chance for isolated rain it'll be hot with a high near 92 quiet in the evening temps in the 70s i'll be back with a look at your aquifer and your pollen count thank you sarah most of the 2020 class were upset when their graduation ceremonies were canceled still ahead on the news at noon how some seniors from new hampshire got a once in a lifetime experience. Oh, that looks cool. Graduating on a mountain. Plus, Burger King, new breakfast item, vegetarian? We're gonna explain. And if you've been on a plane recently, you may have seen some people flying without masks on. After the break, the new rules that might hurt your traveling plans if you don't follow them. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. And in your consumer news, airlines enforcing stricter rules when it comes to traveling amid the pandemic. United Airlines says they're going to start banning passengers who refuse to wear face masks. The airline plans to roll out the new policy this Thursday. The policy will require flight attendants to ask passengers whose faces are not covered to use a mask. Those passengers will be offered a mask if they don't have their own. But if they still deny it, they say no. Their names will be put on an internal restriction list when they reach their destinations. United flights could be off limits to those passengers, at least for a while. American Airlines announcing a similar policy just last night. 
Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos is going to be willing to testify before Congress in its investigation into the tech industry for possible antitrust violations. That news from a letter sent to congressional leaders by an outside attorney for the company. According to the letter, Amazon is willing to make any executive available for testimony up to and including Bezos himself. It specified that other Amazon executives are directly in charge of the business units under investigation. Representatives from Apple, Facebook, and Google are also under congressional investigation and are expected to testify, too. And Burger King releasing its first meal for vegetarians, the Impossible Croissant, which has been, far, has been so far available in only select markets. It contains a plant-based sausage substitute served on a croissant, along with eggs and melted American cheese. The sausage made by Impossible Foods, specializes in plant-based meat substitutes. Get this though, Burger King giving away up to 100,000 croissant which to promote the launch. The promotion available only on Burger King's app. It is available nationwide at participating Burger King restaurants at a retail price of $3.99. Country music star Garth Brooks headed back to the concert stage with social distancing in mind. He's gonna be performing at a concert next weekend that will air live across the country. But his fans are going to have to cheer him on from their cars. Brooks's concert is going to be performed at a drive-in theater on June 27th. It'll also only air at 300 drive-ins across the country. Tickets for the concert go on sale Friday for 100 bucks. And Top Chef host Padma Lakshmi is writing a children's book. Tomatoes for Neela will be her first picture book. It's about a little girl who likes to cook and helps prepare her family's savory tomato sauce. It is scheduled to be released in the fall of 2021. We have more information about what's going to be in the book right now. Just head to KSAT.com. She's also written some cookbooks. A ski lift graduation ceremony on a mountain is taking social distancing to <laughs> new heights. Obviously, some high school seniors in New Hampshire were able to receive their diplomas on the top of a mountain after their graduation ceremony was canceled due to the pandemic. They took the ski lifts with their families and they all wore masks. That is fantastic. Very creative. Some fresh mountain air there. I'm still stuck on the impossible Chris Burger sandwich. King breakfast sandwich. Would you, eat, like, would you eat the fish? I would try. I haven't tried any of the impossible burger stuff, but this looks, it looked really good in the picture on the screen. What about you? You seem skeptical. Your face says it all. I don't know. I'm from Louisiana. I'm, I'm <laughs> you know. Steak and potatoes. I Sausage got it. is a sacred food That's in fair. Louisiana. Sarah, you tried Impossible stuff, right? Um, no, I haven't. Oh. <laughs> she was kind of making a face, too. I mean, hey, if it works, it works. And there are a lot of people that still, it's healthy. Meatless Fridays, people have meatless Mondays, meatless mm. Fridays, That's true. You know? You're right. We'll try it. We'll try it. Hopefully the aquifer uh, will be able to get a good drink of water for some of the isolated showers out there. I don't, I doubt it though, unfortunately. It's down about a foot over the past 24 hours and mold is low at 250, but today's isolated rain may jack that up a little bit over the next few days. Pigweed is low as well at 20. I'll be back with a look at radar and we'll talk about rain chances the rest of the week coming up. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Delta getting the green light from China to resume some flights to the country. The airline announcing that flights will resume on June the 18th. Now, Delta had filed an application to operate two weekly flights from Seattle to Shanghai via Seoul, although they're still awaiting final details from the Civil Aviation Administration of China. The move comes after flights to and from China were halted by many major airlines on the outset of the coronavirus outbreak. Meanwhile, Apple says consumers and advertisers spent $500 billion through apps last year. This according to a study from an analysis group commissioned by the company. The hefty amount includes both transactions that Apple handled directly, like paid apps, as well as purchases that occurred through apps where Apple is not directly involved, like Uber. The estimate doesn't include revenue from Apple's own app subscriptions like Apple Music. And 24-Hour Fitness officially filing for bankruptcy, closing roughly 100 gyms in its wake. The national chain is citing the coronavirus as the cause, which forced its locations to shut down for months on end. In their Chapter 11 filing, the company says they've secured $250 million in funding to help reopen at least 300 of their clubs. And the Chichetta Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado, coming to you from New York City.
Any plans to fly? Um, no, but no? lots of driving. Lots of driving. Where are you going? I, I'm, I'm going to go to South Padre where they, they I think in, we were just talking about this in Port Aransas. They just caught a huge shark. Yikes. Off the coast of Port A. Oh my goodness. And so we're headed to the coast and uh, yeah, and I'm a little shark. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I, I know the temperatures for the water are pretty happy yeah, they're uh, pretty for sharks. they're warm up there down there, uh, Ursula. So yeah, we'll, we'll keep away the sharks. No sharks in your forecast, Ursula. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are seeing a few pop-up showers out there, especially continuing to see uh, them generally west of downtown San Antonio, kind of along an I-10 and uh, I-37 line there. Uh, that's where most of the rain has been today. It's been a steady swath of pop-up uh, isolated showers. There is no lightning whatsoever with these downpours, and so we don't have to worry about any kind of severe weather of any means, these are just uh, free water sprinklers, if you will, for your front lawn, because we are seeing a few of those showers that are a little heavier. I wanna go ahead and zoom in uh, to Hondo right now. Hondo and Castroville, right along Highway 90 there. Seeing some uh, of that heavier, quick, doses of rainfall from Hondo to Castroville. And then out toward San Antonio, out near Palo Alto College and JBSA Lackland, another passing shower. These areas have seen a decent amount of rain throughout the day today. In fact, I wanna show you just how drastic the difference is between those who have gotten rain and those who have not. We'll go ahead and we'll pause this and we'll look at the radar in estimated rainfall totals over the last six hours. You can see very clearly that areas west of San Antonio, right along 410 there, and then out towards 1604, that's where the rain has been today. Uh, as far as rainfall totals, radar estimated rainfall totals of, in some places, up to about half an inch of radar estimated rain. But for most places that have seen rain, really we've only seen about a, a tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch of rain. And officially at the airport, absolutely nothing. And so unless the airport gets one of these isolated showers that some locations have been seeing, our rainfall total for the day officially will be zero. So again, if you have received some rain, count yourself lucky. Those rainfall totals are really stacking up against us, unfortunately, for the month of June. We just haven't seen much rain. In one of the rainiest months of the year, we usually see more than four inches of rain for this month. Outside right now, you can see a good mixture of sun and clouds. It's toasty, it's 85 degrees, and there are plenty of areas that are getting a ton of sunshine. It's mainly just those these extremely isolated showers that are creating a cool down for some people. The rest of us are in the upper 80s, near 90 degrees. And for the rest of the day, we'll top off right around 92 degrees for the afternoon high. Rain chances over the next seven days are not looking great. Uh, today, we saw a good amount of rain west of downtown San Antonio, but over the next few days, it'll be isolated in nature. No widespread rain in our forecast until uh, for the next seven days. Looking at the dust forecast, in the summer months, we see uh, Saharan dust travel more than 5,000 miles all the way to San Antonio, Texas in the summer months. And over the next seven days, we're not gonna see much dust in the atmosphere. However, by the middle to the end of next week, we could end up having some dust around, allowing for a brownish hue to the sky and causing some problems for those who suffer from respiratory issues. But we don't have to worry about that until late next week. For the rest of the week here, hot and humid, isolated shower here and there. Thank you so much, Sarah. And next in sports, taking a look at some seniors who are getting some serious recognition in three different sports.